Hi, my name is Chandra, and today I'm going to talk about real-time inference using equality saturation. This is joint work with my collaborators at the University of Washington. Rewrite tools are used in a lot of important software, from compilers to SMT solvers and even machine learning frameworks. They are a common way for performing various optimizations and simplifications over programs. Since rewrite tools are so widely used, a lot of work has focused on developing robust and reliable rewrite engines that can efficiently apply these rules. However, a big challenge with rewrite systems is coming up with the rules themselves. Designing rewrites is a manual optimization exercise in practice, and often is very time-consuming and tedious. Furthermore, unsound rules, too few or too many rules, can affect the correctness of rewrite systems and make them less effective. So to mitigate these problems, prior work has focused on automatically inferring rewrite rules. These techniques broadly follow a three-step approach. First, they enumerate terms from the grammar of some domain, for example, here, we have a very small grammar with the plus operator, two variables at a constant. We only see a small subset of the terms till depth 2 that you can generate by exhaustive enumeration over the grammar. The next step is to find candidate rewrites. Some prior work has used the concept of fingerprints, where candidates are found by evaluating the enumerated terms over concrete inputs. If the output of evaluating two terms is the same, they can together be a candidate rewrite. For example, here we have the commutativity of addition, here we have the identity of addition, and then here we have a somewhat less useful, confusing-looking candidate, but it is still a candidate if the fingerprints match for the left-hand side and right-hand side. So after the candidates are generated, the next step is to filter out redundant ones to keep a small set of useful rules. Now each of these steps come with their own challenges. For example, term enumeration can be tricky due to there being exponentially many of them, Candidate generation is hard because there may be unsound candidates that need to be filtered out. And finding a small set of rules can be hard because redundant rules can make the rewrite engine slow. So in this talk, we will look at a new approach that uses equality saturation to mitigate some of these problems and leads to a small, useful set of rewrite rules faster. But before we go any further, let's first understand what equality saturation is. Say you have this term, a times 2 divided by 2 and you want to rewrite it to this equivalent but simpler term, A. One way to do that would be to apply transformations in the form of rewrite rules. So here are three rewrite rules that we can apply to get the final term. First, we apply the rewrite rule that reassociates the multiplication and division. Then we apply the rule that rewrites 2 divided by 2 to 1. And finally, we apply the identity rule to get A. Now, this order of rule application worked for this example, but we cannot say for sure that it will work for other inputs as well. This is the problem with applying rewrite rules in a specific order. Another issue is that the older terms are no longer preserved, so in the future some optimizations may become impossible. And finally, such an approach for rewriting also makes it hard to have support for some rules, for example commutativity, without adding some extra tricks that ensure termination. Equality saturation instead takes a different approach to rewriting. It uses a data structure called an e-graph to store all the equivalent terms obtained by applying the rewrites without adhering to a specific order. After applying the rules up to some termination condition, like a timeout or, for example, saturation, the final program is extracted based on some cost function. So going back to our example, let's look at an e-graph. So here we have the initial e-graph, which is actually just the AST of the input term. But note that the nodes here are inside their own equivalence classes, or e-classes, and the edges point from an e-node to an e-class of children. Then when we apply a rewrite rule, the e-graph is populated with the new equivalent terms. In this case, the e-class contain, containing the div term now also has the new term obtained by applying the rule. So this is how equality saturation works. It is a technique for applying rewrites without discarding any of the old equivalent forms. Another thing to note here is that equality saturation exploits sharing. For example, the e-node 2 appears only once in the e-graph even though it is used between different terms. So this was all about using equality saturation to apply rules. But it also turns out that equality saturation is effective for helping us learn the rules themselves. To show that, we have built a tool called Ruler. Ruler takes a grammar and an interpreter and uses equality saturation to learn a small, useful set of rewrite rules. Like prior work, Ruler also follows a three-step approach. So let's look at how it can make these three steps more effective by first looking at enumeration. 
Recall that naively enumerating terms from the grammar can lead to exponentially many terms, which makes it hard to navigate the term space. Instead, in ruler, terms are enumerated over an e-graph. We start with an initial e-graph with just some variables and constants, and then in each round, as we enumerate deeper terms, we do so over the e-classes currently in the e-graph. So effectively, we are enumerating modular equivalence. But what does enumeration modular equivalence get us? It lets us use the rewrites we have learned so far to minimize the term e-graph. For example, consider the two equivalent terms, x plus x plus x plus y, and x plus x plus y plus x. And th these are the two terms that we saw previously. And consider a scenario where ruler has already learned commutativity. So in this scenario, ruler will apply the commutative rule on the term e-graph to detect that these two terms are in fact equivalent. What that means is that the E classes for these two equivalent terms will get merged by equality saturation. The nice thing about this is that in the next round of enumeration, there will be fewer E classes to enumerate over, which dramatically reduces the size of the E graph. So the key insight here is that ruler uses equality saturation to shrink the term space by applying the rewrites as they're being learned. But how do we bootstrap the learning of the rules, rules at all? To understand that, let's move on to the second phase of ruler, which is about candidate generation. Ruler generates new candidates by using the concept of characteristic vectors. Initially, the term e-graph is seeded with some variables and useful constants from the domain, and their e-classes are associated with initial cvex or characteristic vectors. You can see our paper for details on how to effectively seed the cvex, but here we're just going to consider random sampling. Also note that the cvex for constants like 0 are just the constants. Then as we enumerate over this initial e-graph, we compute the cvex of the new e-classes that are being added by using the interpreter of the domain. When two e-classes have the same cvex, that indicates a potential candidate. For example, here we have the commutativity of addition, and here we have the identity of addition. So once the candidates are found, ruler supports the use of various techniques to verify or validate the rules depending on the domain. For example, you can use model checking for smaller domains, SMT for domains that have supported theories, or even fuzzing. Candidate generation often generates thousands or even hundreds of thousands of candidates. Ruler therefore uses a novel minimization algorithm that also uses equality saturation to find a small set of useful rewrite rules from this giant candidate pool. So for example, here, Ruler's candidate generation has found three commutative rewrites for addition and three for multiplication but only two of them are actually useful because the rest are just special cases. So to select a good set of rules, ruler will first use a cost function that prefers generalized rules to rank the candidates. It then picks some top k rules from the candidate pool, and here top k is set to two. For the rest of the candidates, ruler will instantiate them and add them to a new e-graph that we call the rule e-graph. So here we can see the rule e-graph made with the left-hand sides and right-hand sides of the rest of the candidates in the candidate pool. Then, ruler will use the rules that it has learned so far to run equality saturation over this rule e-graph. And what this does is it lets ruler decide if any of the rest of the candidates are actually derivable from the rules already in the rule set. If so, then the candidates are discarded since they are redundant. So in this way, ruler will continue processing the candidates in the candidate pool until all of the candidates have been processed or the ones left are all unsound. Our paper discusses more details on how the choice of top k affects the rule set quality and also the performance of ruler, so I encourage you to take a look at that. So the key insight from this part is that ruler uses equality saturation not only to shrink the term space, but also to shrink the candidate rule space dynamically as it is learning the rules themselves. These two ways of using equality saturation are largely responsible for ruler's performance. So that's how ruler works. Now I want to briefly discuss a very interesting phenomena that we encountered, which we call equality saturation soundiness. Note that, note that we call it soundiness because it's not a formal guarantee, but we found it to be really useful for investigating the rule sets produced by ruler and also for debugging. So the idea here is that equality saturation tends to amplify unsoundness which then we can use to detect if any unsound rules are present in the rule set. To know what that means, consider this tiny e-graph and the rule set which has one sound rule and one unsound rule that has somehow crept in, for example, due to insufficient fuzzing. 
Now, when ruler runs this rule set during equality saturation on the Termini graph, the first rule will merge A times 0 with 0, as it should. But then when the next rule applies, it also merges A times 0 with 1, which ends up proving 0 equal to 1. Equality saturation will detect this incorrect merge and crash and indi indicate to the user that some unsound rule is present in the rule set. This is somewhat analogous to proving false in a theorem prover, and we think that this feature can be further exploited for building or debugging equality saturation-based tools. So that's all I had to say about Ruler's core technique. Ruler is open source, and it is implemented in Rust and uses the egg equality saturation library. Now I would like to discuss some of our results. We are first interested in comparing Ruler with other similar tools, and for that we chose CVC4. So the CVC4 theorem prover also supports rule inference, so we're interested in comparing Ruler's performance and rule set against CVC4's. Let's focus on the largest experiment, which is on 32-bit bit vectors with three connectives. Our results indicated that Ruler is significantly faster than CVC4, and we also found that Ruler generates significantly fewer rules than CVC4. But this raises the question of whether Ruler's rule sets are actually even useful. And to answer that question, we designed a metric called derivability. Derivability uses equality saturation to compare two rule sets. The way it does this is it allows us to run equality saturation with one rule set over the other. So for example, here, we see that the derivability of ruler's rule set is 0.98. This indicates that 98% of the 1,782 rules that CVC4 generated were actually derivable from the 188 rules that ruler generated by running quasi saturation. So the overall conclusion from this part of the evaluation is that ruler can quickly find a small, useful set of rewrite rules. Next, we want to compare ruler with human written rules. For this, we chose the Herbie tool. So Herbie is a tool that automatically improves the accuracy of numerical expressions. It was first published at PLDI in 2015, where it won a Best Paper Award, and since then, it has been used by various organizations, including NASA, Sandia National Labs, and so on. Herbie is interesting for us because it relies on rewrite tools for finding equivalent, potentially more accurate expressions. So for this part of the evaluation, we focused only on the rational rule set of Herbie. Herbie also supports rules over reals and fixed point, but those are ongoing work for us. So Herbie's original rule set had 52 rules over rationals, which were designed by the developers over the past six years. And even though the Herbie rule set is fairly stable and well designed, if you look at the Herbie repo, you'll find that there are several issues from users that are about missing rules or incorrect rules. So for example, here we have an issue, and Ruler was actually able to resolve this issue. Ruler found these two rules over rationals, and when we gave these two rules to the Herbie developers, they added it to their rule set because the rule set was missing these two rules. And then when we ran Herbie again, the issue raised by the user here was resolved. We are also interested in an end-to-end -end evaluation of Ruler. For that, we integrated Ruler's rules with Herbie and applied four different treatments. First, we removed all the rational rules from Herbie. Then we ran Herbie without any changes. Then we ran Herbie only with the rules found by Ruler. And then finally, we ran Herbie both with its original rule set and the rules from Ruler. First, we found that Ruler's rules do not reduce accuracy. This was actually really important because improving accuracy is the primary purpose of Herbie. So Ruler's rules are at least as good as original Herbie rules. We also found that even without affecting accuracy negatively, Ruler can actually find smaller outputs, which is useful for a synthesis tool like Herbie for making the outputs easier to comprehend. Our paper has more details on this experiment and much more on various sensitivity analyses we performed on Ruler's core algorithm. So that brings me to the end of this talk. Please check out the repo, check out our paper for more details, and reach out if you want to know more about how Ruler works. And thank you for listening.